My brothers and sisters, people have a bad habit of comparing themselves to others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually told us that He has favored each one of us in a unique way. You don't know what Allah has taken away from another and given them something you're looking at. Perhaps if the same was taken away from you, you wouldn't even cope and you wouldn't manage. This is why in Surah An-Nisa, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ Don't wish for and don't yearn for that which Allah has blessed some above others. Allah made you a male, alhamdulillah. Allah made you a female, alhamdulillah. Allah has given you, alhamdulillah. Allah has taken away from you a few things, alhamdulillah. Praise Allah upon all conditions. The minute you look at someone else, and you start wishing for what they have, your contentment is diminished automatically because you are not happy. Rather concentrate on what Allah has bestowed upon you, what He has given you, and you won't go wrong. Uh, you know, you will have to adjust your life based on what Allah has given you. Some people have a lot, but they lack sleep. Some people have very little, but they sleep well. Some people, subhanAllah, they eat worth just a few dollars or pounds and others eat worth a lot but you might find the more nutritious food might be that which less money was paid towards may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding my brothers my sisters if you look carefully at this piece of advice which is taken from the quran surah nisa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us fine tune our thinking we will become content when we realize we have been gifted in order to realize the gift, you're going to have to do a lot of thinking. You're going to have to understand, make do with what Allah has given you. Not everyone is the same and everyone has been tested with different tests. So let's take heed inshallah with that particular verse. Then I'd like to go to verse number 36 of Surah An-Nisa and the following verses. These verses are actually so powerful, they have in them advice. And this advice, if we were to adopt it, I promise you we would achieve contentment, happiness and success. Listen to what Allah says. وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا He starts the verse by saying, Worship Allah alone and don't associate partners with Him in worship. And be kind to your parents. Kindness to your parents. Subhanallah. We start off with the worshipping of Allah. We move on to kindness towards parents. What is the connection? Allah is the creator. And in order to bring us into existence, he used a means that he chose, we didn't choose. Those were our parents. So even if your parents are strange in their behavior and wrong and absurd, and even if they are uh, criminals, we need to offer a little bit of kindness to them. We need, we need not obey their instructions when they are wrong, but... We must be kind to them. Allah has never said, follow blindly what your parents say. Many parents sometimes abuse their children by blackmailing them religiously, saying, I'm your parent. Allah instructs you to obey me, so you shall do as I say. If you have that attitude, you will lose contentment and so will your children. So don't do that. You don't have the right to instruct your children beyond the capacity Allah's given you. They have freedom too, to a certain extent. You need to understand this. You cannot impose uh, whatever you want upon your children, claiming that you, they have to listen to you. Allah said they have to be kind to you. They have to be respectful to a certain extent, but they do not obey you where they don't have to obey you, especially when it comes to the transgression uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when it comes to their rights. One quick example is to impose on your children your choice of whom they should marry. That is prohibited in Islam. They need to be happy and they need to want what you might have suggested to them or they might want something else. We need to remember this. If you want to lose your contentment and your happiness and you want to lose your sleep, then you begin to impose upon people that which you're not allowed to impose such as what I've just mentioned now regarding marriage. It's a very important point. That's why I spent a moment speaking about it. You want happiness? Learn to communicate. Learn to be kind to your parents. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be kind to your relatives. Be kind to your relatives. 
Remember to do ihsan to your relatives. Be kind to your relatives. Who else? The orphans. Wow, we spoke about the orphans previously. And here Allah mentions it again in Surah An-Nisa. As well as the masakin, those who are poor. Be kind to them. Don't rebuke them. If you want contentment, a beggar is asking you something, you can either respectfully walk away. You can, you can give them something through kindness for the sake of Allah, but don't rebuke them, don't abuse them, don't hurt their feelings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. You're searching for contentment, don't cause harm to others. If you're causing harm to others, you will not achieve any contentment. Then Allah says your neighbors, no matter who your neighbors are, even if they're those who are traveling with you, those who are perhaps living next to you, those who work with you, all these are people you interact with, they are considered different types of neighbors even those in a mode of transport that might be seated next to you they are considered your neighbors don't hurt them don't harm them neither with a foul smell nor with smoke that is going in their direction nor with anything that is verbally abusive or in any other way if you if you are careful of this Allah will grant you the contentment that you are so uh, uh, desperately searching for and every one of us then Allah says, وَبْنِ sabili Ibn sabil is a person of uh, the path, you know, whether, whether it is uh, a homeless person, uh, even if it is a person who's just out of their own homes and they are traveling, all these you need to be kind to people. In a nutshell, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah does not like those who are arrogant, those who are haughty, those who are proud and filled with pride. Work on, your, on these habits, eradicate them, and you will definitely achieve contentment. We move on to verse number 38 of the same surah, Surah An-Nisa, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding spending. Allah says that you should be spending. Listen to the verse. وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ رِئَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah says those who spend their wealth. So on one hand Allah is speaking about spending wealth. And I'm sure we've heard about giving the orphans moment ago, moments ago, giving the poor, giving those in need with kindness. And then Allah says watch your intention when you're giving. If you are to give and your intention is to be a show off, then we have another problem. So look at the balance Allah is striking. On one hand, he tells us that you must give and you must be kind. And on the other hand, he says, hang on, don't spoil your intention. Don't do it to show people, do it for our sake. So in this verse, Allah says those who have spent in order to show off and they don't believe in Allah nor in the last day, they stand to lose. They will not achieve contentment because it will never be enough. You're trying to please people. People will laugh at you. You please Allah, Allah will reward you. It's amazing. If you please people, you have spent a million. There will come another person who will spend 10 million. Yours is dwarfed. But when you spent it for the sake of Allah, the small bit that you might have spent holds a lot of value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is warning us to say, don't allow yourself to be spoiled with intention such that you are starting to show off. Always go back to your intention, clarify it, purify it, straighten it, and it should be for the sake of Allah. You will be so happy. Whether people have acknowledged you or not becomes irrelevant. If someone says, oh, thank you, Jazakumullah khair, may Allah reward you, alhamdulillah, we're happy that they made a dua for us, they supplicated for us. But if that doesn't come, we did not do the kindness because we felt they deserved the kindness, but we did the kindness because we know Allah loves those who do kindness or who engage in kindness. Remember that. I repeat this. We engage in kindness because we know Allah loves those who are kind. We don't engage in kindness because we deserve or because we think the ones whom we are being kind to deserve it. If you were only kind to those whom you thought deserved the kindness, the world would never become a better place. But if you, if you are kind to everyone, because you know that's what makes Allah happy, then definitely you will achieve contentment and you will contribute towards the uh, betterment of the entire globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment.
you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.